My name is Kevin Dixie. I'm the owner of No Other Choice Firearms Training out of St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm a proper sponsored shooter. The reason that No Other Choice tackles the topic of firearms training in a different aspect than most companies you see nowadays is because we want people to understand that you should be at a point of really no other choice before you ever, and I mean ever, use your hands, a bat, brick, or a firearm or the skills you have to impact a human life. No Other Choice was started actually by a woman and I don't even remember her name and it was funny because I was already doing training it was already a thing going on I wasn't LLC or anything like that I was just taking people out and it was a mom who got arrested because she was trying to do the right thing to defend her kids against some other adults that came over to fight the kids for whatever reason and she got in some trouble now she escaped it she wound up uh, getting off and what I had to when I had a conversation with her I had to explain to her that you know, there are things you could have done better. And she was like, well, what? And I started explaining it to her. She's like, well, why don't you train me? I was like, well, I really don't want to get into training the public. I was helping out a lot of police cadets and things like that. And she was like, no, you should help me. And I did. And so it spawned from there into helping a lot of women actually defend themselves. And then, of course, you got friends that are like, well, I want to train too. And then word of mouth spreads. And next thing you know, you got a lot of people lining up to train with you. Um, and what I wanted to make sure is that not only were people getting trained, but at the same time, you understood what a firearm was what it truly is and what it truly represents, even from a historical standpoint, a constitutional standpoint. So I was like, say, hey, you know what? I can take people and train them, and then I can break stereotypes about a firearm itself. Thus, we can start healing communities. So why not put it all under one roof and thus was born no other choice, a philosophy behind um, not only making sure we teach from a de-escalation standpoint, uh, philosophy behind making sure we keep good guys out of trouble, but make sure that bad guys realize when they made a mistake. Coming from an environment like the inner city and when it comes into firearms and training allows me to speak, if you will, two languages. I'm kind of bilingual in that way. So I can understand the everyday common family and common person that's been in the firearms all their life. And I also understand how to help people that maybe have a negative thought about firearms and training and how it represents and constitutional awareness and things like that. And because I can bring that life experience, people can adapt to me easy. They can understand me. It's, it's kind of like being relatable if you will. So I bring that, that factor of being relatable and people can bond to that. And thus, there's a trust factor that's instilled. And so in firearms, we spend a lot of time talking about policing the inner city. Uh, that's a conversation that needs to be had. It's a, it's a true conversation. But at the same time, we have to let the inner city know and the people in those environments know that you are still your first line of defense and how can we better arm you. So when you are bringing firearms into the community, you know that we're there for the bad guys and not the good guys that just happen to be there. So I spent close to 10 years with the St. Louis City Police Department in the Prisoner Processing Division, and it, it enlightened me to a few different things uh, during that tenure. One thing was, you know, we live in a society where there are great people that make bad choices. Um, not horrible people, they just make bad choices. And at the same time, we live in a society that's, that's got its first share, share of filth, if you will. There are a lot of people that are out to do harmful things, uh, murderers, rapists, um, uh, habitual assaulters, robbers, things of that nature. So that's, that has allowed me to see the dark depths of society and what we're actually fighting against. And so that spills over into my training. I'm trying to get the everyday soccer mom or soccer dad or a uh, single parent to understand that there are people out here that are real life movies like these characters really exist and you have to understand you need to be able to defend yourself against them and that uh police experience actually brings that to light i'm actually say hey guys no there are there are bad people out here that are willing to do harm to you and we have to make sure that you're able to defend yourself outside the the natural phobia of what a gun is when we get past that we get into hey i want to take a basic class and after that i'm an expert i'm ready to go and rescue you know seven children from 10 terrorists and that's not it. So the biggest misconception I have is that when you put people through training, a basic level training class, call it concealed carry, you put them through that and because they've received great instruction, which is a compliment to me, they leave their thinking, I don't need anything else. I now understand this thing and I'm fully equipped to go out and be as professional as everybody else. It is a great start, uh, but it is definitely not the end. So don't ever think because I took a basic class that it's over, you haven't even begun yet. And it's fun, you should get out and enjoy it. My handgun is a HK VP9 SK. It is the best concealed firearm you can possibly have. I love it. Uh, inside of that, in, as far as my rig goes, I'm running a high threat concealment, uh, everyday carry uh, inside the waistband holster. And uh, what else am I carrying? Always carry an extra spare magazine with me, at least one. Um, and outside of that, I am running everything else that you might not notice as uh, proper, honestly, unless it's my no other choice branded gear. My relationship with proper. 
some of my favorite people. Um, I was already wearing proper clothing. So working for a law enforcement agency, you get to touch gear, feel gear, things like that. Um, so I was already very familiar who proper was. I had a conversation with one of the representatives uh, one day about my program, Aiming for the Truth, and how we get out and we try to yank violence up by its roots and really kill violence at its source where we don't have so many problems in society. And I just wanted some support with it. It's like, hey, uh, I believe in your product and I want you to believe in me and what I'm doing. And I'm talking to this person and it's like just stone face and I finished my spiel and Proper was right on board. So Proper not only puts out a great product at a very reasonable price, and that's something that's important too because a lot of the people I help don't have 200 bucks to spend on a pair of pants, you know, but they still want the right stuff. You know, so if you can get you a nice pair of pants for, you know, less than a quarter of that cost, uh, you're still gonna get the same quality, the same dependability, and that company truly believes in you on top of that. I mean, I mean, what else do you want, right? So uh, from the word go, Proper has been a part of No Other Choice and I plan on keeping it that way. I am loving the RevTech pants. They are very flexible, breathable. So a lot of times I'm out in humidity, um, I'm up and down, uh, or if I'm even out doing community events, I'm moving around a lot, coordinating things, and I don't want to like take off my clothes at the end of the night and have to wring them out, right? And so the RevTech pants actually breathe with me and they stretch with me. I am a larger guy and I also exert a lot of force when I move because I move very fast for my size and I move with a lot of strength and these pants don't give way. Focus on making sure you're safe, focus on protecting your family, focus on making sure that you can live a life that's worth living and you don't ever sacrifice that because some bad person wants to deprive you of what you worked hard for. At the same time, focus on loving thy neighbor as well. Uh, focus on being good people, people of good character, no matter what your level of training is. Um, I want to make sure that not only humanity, but when we go down to our Second Amendment community, um, that we are a beacon of hope for everyone and that we are great neighbors, we are great fathers, we are just great stewards of society. And I want to make sure that everybody's doing their part to portray that message and portray it correctly.